the European Union has imposed a 13th round of sanctions in Russia amidst the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. In this video, we analyze the most recent sanctions, their impact on Russia, and address a critical question, do sanctions effectively work, and can Europe achieve its goals by imposing sanctions in Russia? We also discuss how being part of BRICS has helped Russia to minimize the sanction impact. Before start, don't forget to like the video. Thank you. Let's first discuss the scope of sanctions by European Union. Since February 2022, the European Union has imposed a series of sanctions in Russia in response to its invasion of Ukraine. The sanctions have targeted a wide range of goods and technologies, both on the import and export sides, with substantial financial implications. On the export side, the EU has banned goods worth over 43.9 billion to Russia, which includes a variety of items, ranging from microchips, drones, heavy trucks, and luxury bags to more sophisticated technology and luxury items that are sought after by the Russian elite. These sanctions also extend to radars, camouflage gear, cameras, lenses, radio systems, cranes, antennas, chemicals used in weapon manufacturing, and a broad array of technology products including semiconductors, quantum computing, oil refining technology, aircraft components, and banknotes in any of the bloc's official currencies. The EU has further imposed a luxury ban on goods like pearls, jewelry, handbags, and antiques, specifically targeting items that exceed a 300 price tag to directly impact Russian elites. Regarding imports from Russia, the EU has banned goods worth approximately 91.1 billion. This includes a wide range of commodities such as coal, gold, iron, steel, machinery, cement, wood, plastics, textiles, footwear, leather, vehicles, and notably, vodka and caviar. The import ban also covers carbon blacks and synthetic rubber, with the most significant impact being on Russian crude oil and refined petroleum products. This move aimed at cutting off a major source of revenue from Moscow, effectively reducing EU purchases of Russian oil by about 90% from the estimated 71 billion worth in 2021. Despite exemptions for pipeline imports, this measure, along with a G7 price cap, has been identified as the most daring and far-reaching sanction, costing Russia up to 280 million per day. The EU has expanded its sanctions over time to include a broader range of items. For instance, the import bans now encompass all finished and semi-finished steel products, non-industrial diamonds to cut off an important revenue stream, estimated at 4 billion per year, raw materials for steel production, and other metal goods. Export bans have been extended to luxury cars, certain types of machinery components, and additional items in sectors where Russia is highly dependent on EU supplies. With the aim of degrading Russia's technological base and industrial capacity, Restrictions have also been tightened on imports of iron and steel goods, requiring proof that the inputs used do not come from Russia. How has Russia utilized BRICS blocks to minimize the effects of sanctions? Russia has strategically leveraged its BRICS connections to mitigate the impacts of EU sanctions, emphasizing a shift towards multipolarity in global economics and finance. The imposition of sanctions by the West, aimed at restricting Russia's economic capabilities in response to its actions in Ukraine, has indeed spurred closer ties within the BRICS group, driving these countries to seek alternatives to the Western-dominated financial system and to reduce reliance on the US dollar. The sanctions have inadvertently driven the BRICS nations closer, fostering a sense of solidarity against Western economic pressures. This unity is evident from the increased collaboration and support among these nations, particularly in the energy sector, where India and China have notably increased their imports of Russian oil often paying in currencies other than the US dollar to circumvent the sanctions. The new development bank, established by the BRICS nations, has adapted to the sanctions by exploring and increasing transactions in local currencies, reducing dependence on the US dollar. Despite sanctions, the bank has continued to approve loans and fund projects across member countries, with a significant portion of lending in recent times being in non-dollar currencies, like the Chinese yuan. This shift not only challenges the dollar's dominance, but also reflects an effort to create a more insulated financial system, less susceptible to Western sanctions. Initiatives like the Contingent Reserve Arrangement and increased transactions in national currencies are seen as steps towards creating a more balanced global financial ecosystem. Now, let's discuss the sanctions' impact on Russian economy. Despite sanctions, certain sectors of the Russian economy have indeed been thriving, 
especially the defense industry, which has seen significant growth due to increased government spending. In 2023, defense spending accounted for a substantial portion of Russia's budget, with reports indicating an allocation of 5.59 trillion rubles in the first six months alone, representing 37.3% of total expenditure. The overall budget plan for the year envisaged 17.1% of total funds being spent on national defense, with a new estimate for annual defense spending reaching 9.7 trillion rubles, marking one-third of the total spending target and the highest share in at least the last decade. This focus on military expenditure has driven a strong recovery in industrial output, notably in the defense sector, where production has surged. Non-defense industrial production, however, contracted by about 8% year-on-year, while sectors with a high share of state defense orders experienced a jump of 36%. This shift towards militarization has led to economic growth, with Russia's GDP rising more than expected. Analysts at Bloomberg Economics have projected a growth surpassing 3% in 2023, a figure that President Vladimir Putin has suggested could exceed 3.5%. However, this growth comes at a cost. With increased spending on internal security and law enforcement alongside defense, the Ministry of Finance reports that expenditure on national defense, internal security, and law enforcement for 2023 to 2025 will average 5.7% of GDP per year. The emphasis on military and security spending has led to reduced powers for local and regional governments and forced cuts in other sectors to accommodate the heightened military expenditure. The Russian economy's reliance on fossil fuels continues to play a significant role in financing this military focus. Although the sector faces challenges from Western sanctions and price caps, despite these obstacles, Russia has managed to sustain its war effort and support for the defense industry through increased tax revenues, drawing down the National Wealth Fund, and borrowing, leading to a historically high government deficit. Let's conclude the discussion. Considering the sanctions and their impact on the Russian economy, it's important to remember that imposing these sanctions comes at a significant cost to European citizens, already placing them under financial pressure. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the EU sanction on Russia? Share your thoughts in the comment below.